Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. I think we're going to do a coda on this Masters of the Universe Revelation scenario debacle. Yeah, we weren't going to actually. People kept asking us about it and somehow everybody else is covering it except for us. Um, but I want to talk about some things that, you know, tie into it that aren't necessarily directly about it. So we're going to cover it. People keep asking us to. Yeah, so Kevin Smith is out there kind of surprised or acting surprised by all the backlash. Because there's fans that don't like me just really, really changing things? I just, I don't understand. I don't understand, which blows my mind because this this guy, if, if anybody uh, should be able to understand what it's like to... Uh, you know, criticize a, a franchise being altered. I mean, this is the same guy who literally sold tickets, sold tickets uh, so people could listen to him dunk on Hollywood mm -hmm. and dunk on Tim Burton and dunk on Warner. His brand and career was based on calling out, you know, this, this shit, Star Wars, that kind of stuff. That's what he made his brand on. He put George Lucas on trial in the Clerks cartoon. I mean, come on. Mm -hmm. Come so on. So I'm like, you know, you know, he tells us to grow the fuck up. Well, we know what that's like. I'm just like, look, you 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 dish it out, but you can't take it. He's not the same person he was 15, 20 years ago. I mean, it's it's very clear Kevin Smith has completely lost touch with the fans that he used to be the the champion mm -hmm. of. And, you know, a lot of people from our generation, you know, love Kevin Smith. You know, uh, I was a teenager when he was really big and, and uh, you know, I love Clerks, love the first two Clerks movies. And and uh, I always thought he was one of us. And Well, when, he, when the Disney <laughs> sequel trilogy came out for Star Wars, I was I was questioning that oh, yeah, yeah. a lot. Yeah, uh, the way he was behaving. Yeah, it was like, wait, dude, did we watch the same movie? Mm -hmm. I mean, did we watch the same movie? But well, he's he's Hollywood now. But here's you know? the thing: I, he wasn't a fan of He-Man. No, he wasn't. Shows and the way he's acting surprised shows he wasn't a fan of He-Man as well. Uh, but before we get into it any further, before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Over two hundred and forty-three thousand subs, mm -hmm. something like that. Uh, thank you so much for the support. We do talk about uh, cartoons, talk about animation, pop culture. Uh, we'll give you a little bit of backstory here. Oh, you know, I forgot my woohoo, sorry. Yeah, you gotta give the woohoo. Sorry, woohoo! Uh, give you a little bit of backstory here in a minute or two uh, about, you know, the Kevin Smith situation for those of you who haven't been following it. Um, get popcorn, this is gonna take a little while. But before that, you wanna mention the book? Oh, yeah, okay, so we're gonna do kind of a, well, I guess it's a late Cyber Monday sale. Uh, thank you so much for those of you who, who purchased books. Uh, go to shopclownfish.com. We will throw in some free prints. Yeah, you get five free prints through December 1st if you order the books. So it's like tomorrow. And I pack them for you. So She does. She packs all the books. They're all books. packed by me. Uh, you have, have my fingerprints all over them. Thousands, thousands of these books. We did not expect to sell so many. But uh, thank you so much for the support. There are other comic book projects in the works. Uh, next year is going to be a very busy year for us, mm -hmm. uh, for sure. Yes, definitely. So back to this. Okay. Um, Should I give people the nickel tour? Of do the happened? nickel tour first, and then we'll talk about what he said and, and you know that kind of stuff. All right. So for those of you who are not aware, we had a little bit of an uh, altercation with with Kevin Smith. It wasn't even our our fault. No, no, it was the weirdest damn thing. So. Last year? Was it last well, year? Even before that, when we heard that there was going to be a new show, that was He-Man show, it was supposed to be the continuation of He-Man. It was going to be so metal and everything you always wanted for He-Man. We actually were very excited about it. Yes. If you look at our videos, we were very excited. Even though it was Kevin Smith, we're like, hey, but it still sounds cool. It's He-Man. It was powerhouse animation. Powerhouse animation. Yeah, like, yeah, we were cool. very excited about it. We um, started off that way. And now we can go back to where, where it went. So we do have, believe it or not, we have uh, friends in and around the animation industry. And we had one of these friends come to us. Trusted source, which we kept saying we trust our source. Trusted source. We've known this source for quite some time. And we're like, yeah, I, if this person is telling us this, this is probably on the level. Um, said that they had a chance to uh, read one of the scripts from the show and was like, okay, this is not going to be the show that everybody is hoping it's going to be. Mm -hmm. It's going to be the Tila show. And uh, actually, we're going to sideline He-Man. It's going to be Tila and this new girl, Andra. And it seems... It's implied that it's a girlfriend. Heavily implied that they are a couple. And I was offered that script. I did not take it because I did not want anybody to get in trouble. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had trouble before with uh, DreamWorks, you know, and I'm like, yeah, I don't even want to go there. Just could you give me the basics of what is going on? And this was my understanding based on that conversation 
that what was going on was. And we didn't even do a video. We just put up, no. we just put up a tweet, like, you know, in passing, because we're like, gosh, I hope this isn't true, but we know our source is probably right. And you just put up a tweet. Yeah. So basically, you know, I'm like, I hope to God this is not true. Um, but, uh, you know, the understanding of Kevin Smith's He-Man series from an alleged insider, Teal is a better He-Man than Adam. Uh, he steps aside to let her and her girlfriend take over the hero duties. If true, it won't play well. Now, that was the Nickel Tor version, the mm. specifics. Well, basically, he said that He-Man was going to be sidelined in the first, ep yes. the first episode. It was going to be the it, Teal, it was Teal show. show. And, and uh, that's what it was. It was heavily implied that there was a relationship with this Andra girl. Now, you know, if there, if there wasn't, uh, you know, an implied relationship between Teal Which and Andra. Which many of the critics applauded. When they gave the first half a review. Yeah, if if this was not the case, then how come we've got comic book resources out there talking about uh, how Tila and Andra got got uh, kind of pushed to the side? So they're saying it's like the Voltron thing. Yeah. Um, part two, uh, the series walks back their potential and gives Tila an obvious and cliched love interest. Um, it's it's obvious, but obviously and cliched because it's Adam. It's Adam. We yeah. think, uh, and I'm not the only. We're not the only ones. It feels like that after the backlash of the first half, they made some changes to the second half. Something happened because it it. I mean, even the, we don't know that for sure. It just feels that way. It feels that way. And Grace Randolph even was like, "Yeah, you know, for all the talk of you know, Tila doesn't have a girlfriend. They sure are pretty damn chummy." Mm -hmm. And the They're first her looks all the time, right? And, and it was implied that there was you know some backstory there that the two had some kind of you know, relationship going on, adventures. Uh, you know, Tila shaves her head, and every time a woman shaves her head, she becomes a lesbian. I mean, according that's to just, Hollywood, according to Hollywood, you know, um, there's a reason it's a cliche. And it's also weird too that Andra was was built up to be such a huge part of this series, and then she's all but forgotten in the second part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she really didn't have much of a job in the second part. She did some things, but not a lot. And you know, and they keep mistakenly thinking that people are mad about the show because they're mad that they gave made Tila one of the main characters. Tila was always a main character. No one has argued that. Also, again, I want to point out when Kevin Smith came down from on high and went after us for our tweet, um, everybody was kind of like, wait a minute, why is Kevin Smith coming down and, and even addressing this tweet if it isn't true? And afterwards when he said this we did a video and we said well we trust our source but we hope that kevin smith is correct and that they're going to listen and they're not going to make stupid you know choices right nobody was demanding anything we were basically like we were very polite yeah as as fans of masters of the universe and as people who watch the pop culture space like you do mr smith it was like if if you go down this road it's going to be a disaster. Mm -hmm. it we is told going to be you. An unmitigated disaster. You cannot pull a bait and switch on He Man. Uh, he Man fans have waited 20 years for another He Man series. The last one, you know, they prematurely canceled it. Well, he came down from behind and he acted like an asshat. He did. As showrunner, I really could have used these story suggestions before we locked the scripts. However, no, He Man does no stepping aside. No, that you you kill him. And Tila has no girlfriend, even though it's heavily implied, um, in our show. The storyline is pretty dark and way metal and kind of stupid when you have Evil Lynn getting the power by you know, promising to sleep a skeleton. <laughs> right. Before Revelation, we were calling it the end of the universe. Yeah, uh, God. Well, and then I it's know, like yeah. also Real Compass TV. Instead of posting your faux insider info, that all ended up being correct. Yeah. Um, here's a real story. At Mattel made a behind-the-scenes video featuring our actors record recording. So a fan took some of Mark and Lena's dialogue and split. No one cared. Nobody cared. So our faux insider info just turned out to be right. And we we're also like, well, if he's saying that it's not right, he's going to look like a complete dumbass when it comes to pass if it's true. So we're like, would he risk looking like such an idiot? Apparently he would. Yeah, because I'm like, well, maybe he's telling the truth because here, here's the thing. And, you know, we, we do know that, you know, things change sometimes. We know that studios sometimes leak fake scripts to try to throw people mm -hmm. off. Uh, now, this particular insider. Oh, well, where they got the script was not going to be fake. It was, well, no. But yeah, <laughs> it wasn't where, where be they fake. got the script, it was not going to be fake. Uh -huh. uh, where they got it from, but still, it was kind of like, well, maybe some things have changed. It's been a few months. Who the hell knows? We'll give him the benefit of the doubt. And we said that Kevin Smith would know 
what it's like to incur the wrath of fandom. This is a guy who's you know made a career out of being a salty fan. But then he started backpedaling too. He started like, well, you know, I they caught him all kinds of lies. Like, I'm a He-Man fan. I used to come home from school. And when he was given the dates, it wasn't even on the air then. And then he was going on about um, different things. People went back and found him saying, I'm no fan of He-Man either. You know, I you, he, doesn't, he was not a fan. As evidenced by the way he handled everything. <laughs> so... Um, he made Screen Rant walk it back when they they basically came out and said, "Yeah, it's He Man's not gonna be the main protagonist. It was it's in gonna the be the PowerCon presentation, guys. We called it then. It was in the PowerCon presentation. They said at the end, in a race against time for the end of the universe, about Tila. After the ferocious final battle, forever fractures Eternia. It's up to Tila to solve the mystery of the missing sword of power in a race against time to prevent the end of the universe. Her journey, her journey." will uncover the secrets of Grayskull at last. This is the epic He-Man and Masters of the Universe saga. Epic He-Man. He-Man. Yep. And the Masters of the Universe saga fans have waited 35 years to see. Uh, Except He-Man wasn't in it hardly at all. First and last episode, we got proper He-Man. Which you that's, said was going to happen. Yeah, I, I told people. I said, you know, they got all excited with the second trip. Like, look, He-Man's back. Like, that's the last episode guaranteed. And it was like, it's all from the same battle again. Well, they said that when the trailer came from the first part. And we're like, that's all the same episode, Pete? just wait. Yeah, because, okay, so, because Kevin Smith felt the need to descend from on high to drag us. All these media outlets dragged us for months. We have yes. we have had to deal with. You should see the DMs and the emails and the stupid bullshit that that we got. Kevin Smith said you're liars, so you're liars. Look at this He-Man trailer. It's clearly a He-Man show. Clownfish TV. You're a bunch of clown shoes. So now you have him going on Twitter, and he was saying, um, "It means the world." Or rather, the universe. My likes are filled with love for the master's original official revelation. After part one, I had to wade through some bile to read the positive reactions. Dude, a couple things here. One, the reason you 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 had so much reaction to the first one is because people cared then. Yeah. And they don't now. We can nope. prove that in several ways. And two, I don't want to hear about bile. I'm not even gonna call it bile. I'm gonna call it shit. Horse shit. We had to we had to plow through, you know, so much horse shit has th thrown our way because Kevin Smith couldn't keep his damn mouth shut. It's also funny to know people from Netflix told other people we know that Kevin Smith wasn't supposed to keep talking. He wouldn't shut the hell up. Yeah, that's some more faux insider information mm -hmm. there. Yeah, Kevin Smith did more damage to this show than we did to this show. Uh, yeah. We basically shot up a flare and said, if you're thinking We're about doing this. We're trying to warn you. If you're thinking about doing this, being part of this fandom, you don't want to do it. No. You don't want to do Tila, it. You made Tila, you didn't even, Tila for her being a popular, important character, you made her unlikable. I think that's what your grave, besides you silenting He-Man, your other grave sin is Tila is nothing like Tila. No. You clearly were not a fan of the show. But beyond that, and then you keep using Tila as your shield. But beyond that, I don't want to hear about the bile you had to wade through. You kind of deserved it for one, but two, yeah, we got through so much shit because of of use, Kevin Smith, and you still refuse to apologize. I didn't lie. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. Lying by omission is still lying, Kevin. Oh, Kevin. So here's the thing. I mean, what's so weird about this is we actually do have some mutuals. If he needed to get a hold of us for any reason, even to set the record straight, he could have at any point in time. Like he could have even shot us an email. Oh. That bullshit thing that somebody had leaked a real spoiler, so he was trying to to, uh, to throw throw off by coming after us. There was us. no other no, spoiler. There wasn't. Nobody knew. Liar! The Come on, you guys can make better excuses than that. The reason everybody was losing their shit was because that was the first indication that anybody had that this show might be he coming out. He probably told Netflix that to cover his ass because they're there like, no why other. did you come down on high to get so ass mad about one tweet? People would have come to us and been like, did you hear the other rumor that Adam died? Now, see, I did not know Adam died because my understanding was this insider had the episode two script, mm -hmm. which focused heavily on Tila and Andra and Adam had already been sidelined. It was a like, where's that? Where's he been? Where's Adam? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then she's all pissed for some reason. And she's now in charge. Here's the thing. I don't want to hear about it, Kevin Smith. And then he's like, um, even then we were not, or, or I said, you know, he goes, uh, hold on here. But since part two dropped, the anger directed at me in July seems to have subsided for season two. No, it hasn't. You lying sack of dog shit. But you, we know you were a liar. You've established that. And I'm not apologizing for that because you don't have to apologize to me. I don't have to apologize to you. Anyway, um, if you go here to the actual Rotten Tomatoes. 
the critical score. When there was critics uh, in the first half, there was like 300 critic reviews. Oh, yeah. We have what? Eight? One, eight, two, yeah. three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. We have eight critical reviews. You went from like 200 and some 300 critics caring to eight. Eight critics cared enough to review your damn show. And most of these sites are not major sites. I mean, we've got Polygon, we've got IGN, but that's that's about it. Like, I've never heard of most of these sites. And again, it's like you had Grace Randolph who refused to review it. She got a screener copy for part two, and she was basically like, I was so burnt out on the first one that I'm not watching anymore. And no. I think a lot of people felt that way. It's not even a blip on Netflix's no, top 10. Eight. Oh, yeah. We, it didn't even hit uh, the top 10 for the week. Um, it, isn't even, it didn't even make the top 10. Arcane's, they didn't Arcane's even, there. Yeah. They didn't even care enough about it to, to cheat it to make it into the no. top 10. Um, so you go to there. There's a critics. You go to all audience. I think there was like 500 and some, maybe 600 Compared audience Compared to scores, the thousands. You yeah. know, uh, that was there. Yeah. There was like six or 7,000 before. 615. And it's 50%. 615 audience score. Yeah, and if you compare this to part one, um, you can see it's much, much different. Here we look. Yeah, 94%. 47. Even then, 40, I thought it was 300. No, it was 47 critic score. I thought there was way more than that. And, uh, oh, maybe it is, but those are just the, the, yeah. the verified ones or the yeah. what do they call that. Anyway, and then there's almost 7,000 audience score. 39 to 94. B basically, the reason he's not hearing more negativity about part two is because everybody checked out. No one cares. Nobody cares. And the other ones that are there are the ones that are still watching it and kissing your ass, Kevin. And then this is where I'm going to go with this now because that was a rehash. Now we're going to go into some new things. Here's the thing. I'm going to say this again. I keep saying it, but somehow it doesn't sink in with people. If you liked the Revelation show, you are allowed to like it. That's fine. I'm happy for you. Go ahead and like it. The problem has become that critic any criticism is viewed as negativity and and that hence this bile if you had any criticism whatsoever it was it was just bile and shit and, and stepped over um and this whole bile. idea right right he's the king of you know bile. criticism and shit um but you if you if you you're not allowed to like something if, if these people, you know, don't like it. You're not allowed to not like it if these people like it. And that's where there's a problem. People are always like, well, you're always attacking people. I am not. I call out when people are attacking other people and bullying other people for not sharing the same opinion. Uh, people disagree with me all the time. I never find it necessary to go onto their Twitter. I never find it necessary to go onto their, their videos or anything else and say, hey, you're wrong about this show or movie because I think this and you're a insert bullying istophobic name here. We don't do that. But if you don't like something they like or you like something they don't like, they come running in to bully the hell out of everyone. Hell, she was whole PR campaign was just to bully. That yeah. was like they, they started off that way. There is a difference between criticism and negativity. And I'm going to tell you a little story. One time, oh, this is way back, when we were doing our Shadowbinders comic, which we mentioned the books earlier, you can go shop Clownfish, um, it was out for free as a webcomic. Well, the original parts were. And there was a podcast, and they did, like, reviews of webcomics. And they did a review of ours. And ours was only, like, like three chapters in, maybe. Oh, yeah, yeah. It wasn't very far. It just started. And... They made all kinds of, of comments about it, and they, they tore it to shreds. They called it poo. You were actually going to put it on the back of the cover. I was actually going to put it on the back of the cover, yeah. Um, and they did all this stuff, and they just tore the shit out of it, okay? And some of the things they said, they were, it was too, it, you couldn't have that development that fast. It was too soon into the, the comic, so they were wrong. But there were other things they had said that were right. And it was like, well, you know what? They're not incorrect, and I will try to do better. So instead of me getting mad, calling them istophobic, saying that you don't like women and maybe you're, you're, you must be fat shaming me because I'm a fat lady and you don't like my book and you must be some kind of problematic, oh, you're an alt-right Yahtzee or whatever I wanted to call them because they didn't like my work. I did what a grown-up does. Take notes, Kevin. Here's what you do, okay? You put on your big boy or girl pants or non-binary pants, whatever you want to put on. You put on your adult, depends in your case, Kevin, and you get up there and you say, you know what, there are some valid criticisms here and I'm not going to deflect them all and call them all bile and shit. Instead, I'm going to take, I'm going to say, oh, look, you know what, they are right about these things. I can learn from these things. And what I did was I wrote them and thanked them for taking the time to look at it. And I said, you know what, you have a point on the following things and I'm going to try harder to, to, you know, do better in those, in that regard, because 
I didn't realize I was doing so bad. Thank you for pointing it out. And I did make a concerted effort to try to do better. I didn't call them names. I didn't tar and feather them. I didn't send them to other places. And back then we had quite a few followers, by the way. And I didn't do any of that. I just said, you know what? Those are some valid points. I'm going to take that into consideration because they were, they were, it was not negativity. It was criticism. There is a difference. That's how adults handle it. Yeah, it's kind of interesting because he had an interview, um, what was it, last week or something, where he said that, you know, he never thought he'd find himself in a situation like The Last Jedi where it was such a polarizing. But it's like who, during the development of this show, and, and Mattel's definitely to blame, too. I'm like, who thought it was a good idea to sideline He-Man for most of the series? Right. Exactly. Well, no. You know? We know. We said. We kept saying. We even get kept with the benefit of the doubt. We were correct. We said it's probably Netflix mandates, which, as it turned out, the same person who said Kevin Smith was supposed to shut his damn mouth yeah. also said, yes, they were mandates. Uh, you know, you can't say man and mandates. They were mandates. Um that, you know, you had to have more women and more minorities and all this stuff. It's mandates from Netflix, which we gave him the benefit of the doubt. And we said that several times before yeah, the show came yeah. out. Um, so, yeah, some of it was mandated. So it's not all his fault. But his behavior is his fault. And I can't believe he's surprised. Because what? Because it's something he didn't care about. If it was a character he cared about, he'd be pissed. Yeah. I mean, this is a guy, again, who, you know, literally sold tickets you know, sold tickets so you could listen to him bitch about Batman and mm -hmm. how awful. Because uh, it mattered to him. Right. And how awful was it Warner Brothers let Tim Burton do Batman and how awful these executives were. It's so weird that he's actually, you know, working in Hollywood now because he spent so much time, you know, shitting on Hollywood. Well, they but, thought it's easier to control him. Probably. Muzzle him. If you give him what he, if you give him jobs, you, have to, you'll, you can muzzle him. Yeah, because we went from. Went from this to, my God, I love the sequel trilogy. I'm going to cry, cry about I'm it. I'm going to cry about it. Um. You know, and I'm not making fun of him for crying about no, it. No, no. Because, you know, we saw when they brought Luke Skywalker back, they all got mad. And what's his nuts from Lucasfilm mm. was all pissy and making fun of people for crying. And it's like, you know, I'm not going to make fun of him for that because, you know, there's not something else. There was a criticism, but somebody said once, and they said, you're making fun, or you're saying it's wrong for the person from Lucasfilm to make fun of Star Wars fans if they cry. But you make fun of Kevin Smith. And you know what? They were right. So after they said that, I have made a concerted effort to not do that because they're right. It's the same thing. I shouldn't be making fun of one if they're crying and not the other. Um, I either should make fun of both of them, which I'm not going to do, or I should understand some people have different reactions to different things. And I try to respect that. Um, again, that's that's taking criticism and saying, hey, not everything's negativity. But Characters mean something to people. I mean, like, He-Man meant a lot to people. she meant a lot to me. And when the new people were ripping, uh, were telling people, you weren't allowed to live, you didn't like it, you were this, this, and everything else. Because it's their thing, and it means so much to them. Thing is, at the same time, it meant so much to you. The old one meant so much to a lot of people as well. And a lot, and not all straight, white, and, and male people um, hate it. You know, they weren't all looking at it because they wanted to get off to it. A lot of... Um, minority groups of people loved She-Ra for various reasons and they felt connected to the character. Same for He-Man. I'm so tired of hearing it's only men. You know, I'm so tired of hearing this. The point is, characters mean something to people and if I would take Steven Universe and I would take Steven Universe because it meant so much because, you know, look at all the, the representation and stuff and if I took that and said, you know, it meant so much to them and I went and, and changed everything about it and made your heroes, killed them all off or made them unlikable, or, you know, made characters that were, you know... Straight. Yeah, make them straight. <laughs> yeah, if I wouldn't change anything about it that made it what you 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 identified with and what, you, what you've, what you you know, connected with when you were a kid, why it meant so much to you, if I wouldn't change everything about that, you'd be pissed. Because it's something... And, and we saw, like, okay, some of the people that are yelling about how dare you, you know, think Afterlife is good because 2016 is the best, go on about, well, Home Alone's the only actual Home Alone movie. I refuse to acknowledge Home Sweet Home Alone. You're doing the exact same damn thing. It's not okay when you do it. Like, you can have a difference of opinion, but actually, you know, going out there and bullying people, that's that's where the lines cross. And the media, you know, what has happened is a lot They've of... They've encouraged it. They've they encouraged themselves it. done yeah. it. Yeah. Um, it's, it's interesting, though, you know, he did talk to Screen Rant. Now, he smacked Screen Rant down mm -hmm. before, and he told oh, him... Oh, he'll talk to that, but he, you know... Yeah, because they're a verified media outlet, you know, mm -hmm. probably on his PR list. But he basically says the same thing. He said, if you start get, you know, going down the rabbit hole of negativity, then the internet shows you more negativity. Social media shows you more negativity, and then you think it's all negativity. 
It says he as he's going as around. The victim. Yeah, yeah playing did, the victim card. Yeah, which again blows my mind. Like this is a guy who literally shit on Warner Brothers, shit on Batman, shit on stupid decisions made by comic book publishers, shit on Star Wars. You know, that was his brand. And now he's getting a little bit of pushback when anybody could have told him, you do this, you're going to get pushback. I'm reading this and there's no way this is true. Okay, Malcolm Ingram calls me out of the blue and he texts me first and he goes, hey, congrats, you've got the most talked about show on the planet right now. Where? No one was talking about it. No except for people like it. us shitting on it. Anyway, <laughs> it's getting great reviews and everybody loves it. Where? Where is it getting great reviews? Because no one was reviewing it. No one was reviewing it. Um, <laughs> I'm like, you must be so happy. I immediately put down everything I was doing and called Malcolm and be like, is that your real situation? Well, Malcolm's lying to you. He's like, yeah, all I see is positivity and stuff. What are you seeing? Where? Where were you seeing this? I mean, the, the people that were tweeting at you, the, 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 the 20 people tweeting at you with all the counts. Um, he's like, all I see is people that hate my guts. And he's like, well, stop clicking on the negative things. Wait, wait, wait. All I see is positivity. Well, where are you seeing it? Well, you stop clicking on the negative things. <sighs> <laughs> and you only look at the ones that are positive. Always look Stay at in the your echo side. chamber. So, Malcolm, is your perspective from the outside of this that I, should, I shouldn't kill myself? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Well, then, Kevin, you know what? Should we have killed ourselves when you sent all kinds of blogs and people to harass us for months? And it turned out you lied. Kevin Smith, we got literal death threats over, over your stupid cartoon. cartoon. Uh, and it turned out you lied the entire time. Our kids got threatened. We got threatened. And um, by the by, the fact yeah. it didn't break the top ten, <laughs> by the fact that there's jack shit reviews on Rotten Tomatoes, and the fact that other people like laughing. I've got to tell you, I love the second part so much more than the first part because the first part made me just mad. The second part, I was so past giving a shit that it was just hilarious to me, and I'm still laughing about it because it was so stupid. It's it's as entertaining as Batman and Robin in places. Like, I, I could not have seen... Evil Lynn. No, like, I mean it what? was. It's bad. Like, I mean, if Robot in a Chicken, funny way. yeah, if Robot Chicken did a yes. skit. This is what it would have so been. So in that regard, I was highly entertained by part two, and I'm not even that <laughs> mad about it because I'm more amused, and I also know it's a one-off, and who cares? Yeah. But this whole thing is the only positivity is not true. So he's basically this is the biggest. But it, only if you look at the positive. I almost killed you, myself over. I'm like, dude. Well, you know what? People were <laughs> upset to the place they were ready to kill themselves with the way you ruined He Man. I'm like, that was that one guy had that really long post talking about how much He-Man meant to him, mm -hmm. and um, you know he went on and on and and uh, you know He-Man meant a lot to him, and then to see He-Man treated as poorly as he was, you know, broke his heart because mm -hmm. He-Man got him through some difficult and then, times and, and in then, his life. And then and then Kevin Smith spent all his time like well, you just don't like Tila because she's just strong. No, no, because no. you ruined Tila. Well, Tila, Tila always was going to be the sorceress. She was always a strong character. Tila wasn't even in the show. So let's let's but, uh, whatever you know. Yeah, she's not. That's not Tila. Bird, um, bird lady should have been a I snake. Should have been a snake. Yeah, should have been a snake. I think you're fine. I think anybody would be enviable of the amount of coverage this show is getting. The amount of coverage I saw barely anybody talking about the show, except for like, well, that one article was about how Kevin Smith dropped the ball and didn't put Andra and uh, Tila together. Uh, most of the coverage I have seen has not yeah. been, there hasn't been much. And what I've seen has been not the best, or it's just been like, it's out, here it is, here's our shield post for the day. Um, that's the end of it. But it's not like massively talked about. How we debate about even doing this video, because we honestly don't give a shit. I, people keep at, yeah, they keep asking us like what are because he's out there now, kind of like I, I golly, I didn't know like like this like this is this is what he he honestly believed. He said uh, just on and on, people shredding me for making Masters of the Universe when I was honestly believing in my heart of hearts. I was like, this is the most faithful telling of these characters' tales since Mattel minted their backstories. You changed stuff. Did Mattel men their backstories that you undid? Evil Lynn was evil Lynn because she lived in the sewers because her parents were going to fuck, fucking eat her? And then she's going to fuck Skeletor. Right. Again. Yeah, I don't remember like, that what? in the Mattel backstory, Kevin. I didn't think we were upsetting the apple cart, so where I stood... We tried to warn you, Kevin! I, I was at the eye of a storm and everyone hated my guts and we had failed and that's what my timeline was Yes, was well, me. that's what your timeline was correct, Kevin. Because oh. I got to tell you, you might be getting some positivity now because most people checked out. And quite frankly, uh, the majority of people, and I, and I don't care what people say on Twitter, the majority of people 
are not fans of the show. I am sorry. I cannot think. This is Kevin Smith who gets off on trolling people. I cannot think that he didn't sit there, you know, giddy at the prospect of like, oh boy, look what we're going to do. Isn't this going to piss oh, I, people I, off? I, 100% because I've seen this dude and he is so in love with himself thinking that he's so clever. I mean, have you heard some of the dialogue in the show? You know, the Fisto joke, Fist and Skeletor. The fact we that made that joke because we used to say Fisto is a patron saint of Clownfish. Yeah. We're going to fist them all. And then he puts that, you know. And then, then uh, you know, the fact that Evil Lynn gets her power by trying to trick Skeletor into fucking her. I mean, I'm like, come no, on. No, she tells him she's going to sleep oh, with she's him. Gonna, yeah, she promise him. a booty. The promise and of booty. And then he powers down because, she, you know. She's not even strong enough to figure out how to get the sword herself. She but then to. you tell everybody that, that the sorceress and Evil Lynn are the most powerful. And technically, and people want to argue this, but sorceress controls the power. Technically, she is more powerful than He-Man. Yeah, that is true. That is true. That's always been true. But when people are promised the the big final battle between what He-Man and What you always wanted to see... And it's it's Evil Lynn and Tila having that big final battle, and Skeletor and He-Man are kind of relegated to the side. Uh huh. You know, with Ram Man in there for shits and giggles. You I know. know he really. I mean, clear, dude wasn't a fan. No, dude wasn't a fan. And you he don't have what, to be, I, but at least do your due diligence. You I, know? I'm sorry. I 100. I, I mean, this is a guy again who eats, sleeps, and breathes nerd culture. He's got. Uh, he's had comic book shows. He owns he does a comic his own shop. YouTube video channel about yeah. you know. He has a podcast. He knew damn well what he was doing, mm -hmm. and he didn't expect it to go over as as badly as it did. And uh, but the thing is, is that you know he should have known what the backlash would be like. like well, but this whole thing about oh no, everybody loves the second half. Not right. true. No, they're not talking. No, about that's just it. Nobody cares, nobody and that's cares. so funny. They're like so basically everybody's on my side now because some people talking about it, or either people like us who you disregard, or uh, people that are kissing your ass, and 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 that and and it doesn't matter even if you have valid points. It's just bile. They flat out say only to listen to the positive things. So how can you do any better when you only listen to the positive things and don't try to improve? Screen Rant's like, he's doing better. It's It's got a 55% audience approval rating compared to part one's 39%. Yeah, because only uh, a, what, a, a tenth of the people have even actually reviewed it. Yeah, it's... It, nobody cares. 615 reviews. Everybody checked out. Everybody left. You chased everybody off with... Uh, poorly thought out part one. And again, I, I, do I think it would have been received better if they had done done it in one chunk? Somewhat, oh, yeah. I, I, I said that before, yeah. Somewhat, but still the fact that you've got, you know, what was supposed to be a He-Man Masters of the Universe show and proper He-Man is only in the first and last episode, it's not going to sit well, fans. And plus, no. uh, most of the other characters were mischaracterized, you know, from mm -hmm. their, their previous incarnations. I mean, it was... It was basically like, you know, tell me you're not a fan of He-Man without telling me you're not a right. fan Right, and then I don't understand you know? why the fans are mad at me. I can, I've met Golly. so many people at conventions and stuff, and they didn't even watch our channel until the He-Man thing, and they were so disheartened by the whole thing that they started watching us. They found us that way. Um, and the thing is, we tried. All we said was, here's what we're hearing, and we hope it's not true, because if it's true, it's going to be a clusterfuck. And guess what? It turned out to be true. And guess what? It turned out to be a clusterfuck. And instead of heeding the warning, I'm sorry, Mom. Instead of heeding the warning, which he should have done, he instead tried to mock us and throw shit at us. And for all his, everybody's throwing crap at me and all the bile at it, he deliberately sent it at us. Um, and he admitted he did later. Yeah, I was trying to deflect because one person put the real spoiler out that no one ever saw. I never heard that. So ever. he admitted, he admitted I, that he was deliberately yeah. throwing shit at us to, to try to put, you know, to and we got it because he was mad about, you know, he, oh, I'm trying to deflect. And by his deflection, it cost us a lot of trouble. And... And he said, I'm not going to apologize for that uh, multiple times, which is fine. Whatever you do, you do. We didn't ask you to. Um, but you don't get to sit here and, and say, I took so much shit when you're the one that, one, you deserved it because you did it to yourself. And two, you threw shit our way. Um, and we're not we're not going to put up with that, dude. Um, but beyond that, my main point of all this is where people are getting upset is they're not allowed to not like it. If you don't like it, even if you have good reasons, even if you were a fan for decades, if you don't like it, it's not because you might have a good reason. It's just because you're bile, you're shit, you, you are some problematic troll bag, whatever, because you don't like their vision. And I'm really tired of hearing that because you know what? If you like it, I'm not going to fight with you. You're allowed to like it. I mean, hell. The second half, I um, if I had to actually be fair, I think I actually like it in a way the fact that I find it funny, if not the reasons I'm supposed to like it. It's <laughs> hilarious to me, and it makes me smile, which to me is a win. But 
as far as the show goes and being He-Man, no, it's garbage, but yeah, it's funny. Yeah. Um, you're allowed to like it. We Neither one of us are ever going to attack you for liking it. You can disagree with us. I know a lot of people do disagree with us on things. And sometimes you're going to agree with us and sometimes you're not. And that's completely fine. What we have a problem with and what we stand up against is this whole idea that if you don't have the same opinion as me, then you're a problematic person. You are a terrible person. You're over a cartoon show. Yeah, and it goes beyond that. It goes beyond just, you know, disagreeing. It goes into freaking threats. It goes We had into, our kids doxxed. It goes into doxing over again over fucking cartoons. Um We're not know, liking Star Wars. Or not liking Star Wars or some other stupid shit, you know, not not agreeing with everything the, the mainstream comic book industry is doing. Take your pick, you know. Um these people are rabid, they're crazy. Uh, and they come from Twitter. They all mm-hmm. come from Twitter. And that, that's, where, that's where we even speak out. Because as far as, you know, you're allowed to have a different opinion than us. That's not what we call you out for. What we call you out for is when you attack everybody else because they don't agree with you. And you call them bad persons because they don't like a costume change. Or they don't like, you know, the fact that the, 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 the He-Man show isn't about He-Man anymore. Or whatever reason. Um you're allowed to have your opinion. That's fine. But you cannot demand everybody else has the same opinion of you as you. And Kevin Smith... Fair criticism isn't bile. You literally just said you're only looking at the positive reviews. You're going to learn nothing, and you're going to continue to be an asshat. He has been lost to Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Like he is completely, completely Hollywood at this point. Maybe go, maybe go get some, go find, go wherever you buried your balls. Maybe go find them and then dig them up, put them back on, and then you know. Try to see it from a fan's perspective again instead of in your ivory tower, clutching your pearls and going on about everybody hates me. I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> and then, but you said that shit at us. And all we did was say, I hope this isn't true. I want this guy back. Can we get this guy back? This is the guy I want back. Like, what the hell? Did you like kill Kevin? Did you kill Kevin Smith? Did you People bear joke. Him? Like, where did Kevin Smith go? Because you're you're not Kevin Smith, man. I don't know what the hell happened to mm-hmm. him, but you're not him anymore. But anyway, this is the, hopefully the last we're going to talk about it because we don't really care. Yeah. Um, we just care more about the way people behave than we care about the actual damn show. Most of this video is about behavior. It's a long video. Um, but I'm hoping this wraps it up. And I don't want to have to be talking about it unless, unless Kevin Smith gives us reason to. I don't think, you know, if, if one thing comes out of this, I think Kevin Smith might learn uh, a couple of painful lessons. I mean, honestly, if he had not gone out of his way to smack fans down, it wouldn't have gone as badly no. as it did. I mean, even, you know, throughout the whole thing, you know, once the show was released and then that live stream they did, that was a disaster. That was like a freaking mm-hmm. wake for He-Man. And then they, they turned the comments off. I was actually, I was actually there in the chat. I was going to pop in. And say hello. I well, he was, that a, was when he was going on about us and like, you know, I yeah. don't an apology. Okay, and I was, I Let's wa- talk about it. I wasn't going to be a dick. I was just going to pop in and say, hey, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. Whatever. I, I don't give a shit. Um, I wasn't being a dick about it. I'm just like, dude, we, we told you. We told you this was going to happen. You knew better. You knew better. You can't tell me that you weren't sitting there around the, the table with the read and being like, oh, God, the fans are going to freaking. He did. Where I killed Orca. We, <laughs> I killed He-Man. And we said, yeah. and even then, if you yeah. go back in our videos, I said, He-Man's not dead. Mattel's not going to let them kill He-Man no. off. I said, Adam's still alive. He-Man's not dead. It's a mantle. They might have it beyond or something like that. But He-Man isn't dead. Uh, I didn't see Evelyn coming at all. Um, but we said all that. Neither did Skeletor. And we didn't think they leave. We didn't, yeah. we didn't think they leave Orco dead either. Nah. I mean, because Mattel would want to use it later. So... I, Whatever. You're not as clever as you think you are, Kevin Smith. And if you ever wanted to grow up and actually talk about it, you know, uh, you, know, oh no, you know, honestly, no. If you decide to grow up and talk about it, I gave you plenty of opportunities. Fuck off. All right. We're going to wrap it up. Yep. Okay. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.